Welcome, everyone, to the Real Boleans Cast Unlimited, episode 11. I am your host, Matrix Lord 212, and I am with Adam, the ultimate Whovian. What's up, Adam? Hello, everyone. It's good to be on episode Matt Smith. There you go. <laughs> so, this is the Real Boleans Cast exclusive podcast for Daily Motion subscribers, viewers. Uh, here you get an opportunity to meet each member of the Real Who Means cast as we revisit their first doctor, their best companion, their best enemy, all their experiences with Doctor Who, um, and you get uh, to really see uh, all the different members of the show. Um, so Adam, I'm going to ask you, like when I first met you on the Real Who Means cast, what was your first experience with Doctor Who? My first experience with Doctor Who, well, uh, it was sort of really seeping in the background because my sister would be the one to watch it in 2005. She really enjoyed Christopher Eccleston and she technically really enjoyed the, uh, the Doctor Rose dynamic from Series 1 and Series 2. I wasn't really interested. I thought things like Wallace and Gromit and like, animation stuff was superior. And then in 2007, I sort of sat down and watched Smith and Jones, the first episode of Martha and Mitch Dune and everything. And for some reason, there was that, that the, the fact that it kept carrying on for like 13 weeks, um, or there was a break actually in the middle, but 13 weeks mostly. And I, I was just like, whoa, this, this story arc was great. And I was introduced to things like the Daleks and of course regeneration with uh, Derek Jacobi and, and John Sim at the end. And I went to things like Doctor Exhibitions. Uh, and I felt, I felt, when I was that Doctor Exhibition in Cardiff that one time in 2007, I thought, wow, I must be more than a fan. This show must have really encapsulated a bit of escapism for me, like adventure and sort of going out of the norm occasionally, which is a lot of fun. You know, it's, just, it's been the most fun ever, really, for a t television show to do that. So now, after David Tennant left, what did you think of Matt Smith? Um, I thought the fact that Steve Moffat gave him an hour to prove his worth was a genius idea. Because I think it did. If it was like 45 minutes, if it was shorter, I wouldn't know what to think. But when you, within that full 11th hour, it, 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 I think it grabbed me. And I was like, oh, let's go on the venture with this guy. Let's go to the Starship UK and all, and, you know, all that. So right. I thought it was oh, cool. yeah. mm. So now, do you like Matt Smith better than David Tennant? Um, I'd say as a doctor, yes. Um, okay. It's the writing, really, dependent. Okay. And what did you think when or we had the 11th hour, we got introduced to Amelia Pond, uh, the cracks, you know, they talked of silence will fall, all these wonderful things, Pandora opens. What did you think when we got to the Beast Below um, with the Starship UK? Beast Below, um, I couldn't get into it as a story, but uh, I had some good ideas. It, uh, it you know, those smilers and um, Liz Tem, but uh, I think maybe uh, it did I, solidify Amy Pond as a companion completely. Oh, yes, absolutely, it, re it really did, and she did prove her worth throughout the whole of the series. It's right. Um, I mean, some people don't like the episode, to, you know. but like certain things in the episode just grab at you. Like this was the defining moment that he says, "I made the right choice mm. with Amy Pond." So. Um, you know, I do like that. And, you know, then things started getting interesting with Victory to Daleks. Now, with Victory to Daleks, um, when I saw it, we all heard about, okay, they were going to redesign the Daleks. Oh, my God, they haven't been redesigned. In a long, you know, oh, my God, what is it going to be? Mm. And immediately, it reminded me of the two-part Cyberman episode when they introduced them. They were from alternate reality. And the story was very, very similar, okay? Um, some guy thinks he creates the Cyberman. Some guy thinks he creates the Daleks, and it's not really, you know. Yes. Um, I really, there was aspects of the episode I liked, but overall, I didn't like the huge Daleks. I thought it was like, you know, the episode kind of, for me, fell flat areas. What did you think of Victory? Uh, Victory, as a story, is under, I think some people sort of, hate it because of the Dalek design and I'm like I quite like it's a war the wartime atmosphere and considering that is led to a big finished box set for Churchill 
yes. uh, which is which is really good. They'll probably, of course, um, expand on on all that stuff and explore yes. it with the uh, Christmas special um, characters, like you things like Kazran and um, the person from the Doctor with the Wardrobe being in there as well. Yes. Um, so. Uh, I think it's underrated as, as, a, as a story, but um, I can see why it'd be like Dalek and Spitfires in Space. Voiced by Mark Gattis, which I never knew until like, a year or two after. Now, we get a jump on with Time Angels. And the moment this hits and River was back, I'm like, oh, this did it for me. I'm like, Matt Smith is gonna friggin' rock. Okay? I like I Matt Smith. I mean, I thought that when I saw the, I liked the Weeping Angels two part. What did you think? Uh, I liked it. Yes, it was uh, very good. Um, I quite like the character of Father Octavian, uh, the general that you would have thought yes. that River would have had a fling with. Um, yeah, that would have been that, that, that whole thing was very cool, very good. Um, yeah. Now, rather than go through the rest of the season and all the episodes of Matt Smith, because we do have a short time with this show. Um, I'm going to jump around. So now, who's your favorite doctor? Tom Baker. Okay. Who's your new who favorite doctor? Um, this is sort of really, it's a really hard one because I do have a, I really have a big soft spot for Matt Smith and I do like Eccleston. And it's not until after Series 9, no, after the Christmas special, rather, where I can really have a full judgment on Peter Capaldi. Right. But as of now, of the 9th, 10th, 11th, well, I'm going to go with Eccleston, actually, yeah. Okay. Okay, man. Now, what about villains? Who's your favorite? Who do you want to see all the time or appear a lot or you can't wait for I them to I think appear? the one that's never really had a bad track record is Davros. Yeah, you're right, because yeah. they don't overuse him, really. Yeah. I mean, he came more, I yeah. mean Genesis he and Atomics, the they, they really don't overuse okay. him, yeah. Remember and some Atomics? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You're right. And he had a great two, 10 and two parter with Davros. That was fantastic. He, he did really well. You know, I think those were like the greatest trailers when they were showing Davros. Oh, yes, absolutely. I don't think they ever be trailers like that. Like people just were like, this is the first time in Doctor Who. Well, actually not the first time. Almost like fifth doctor, five doctors. But where all these freaking companions got together. Yeah. And we're helping out the doctor. That was sick. Mm. And I'm like, I love that. I'm like, I've been dying for them to do that with Peter Capaldi. With him just get round up a whole bunch of companions and take on a, you know, like a big foe. I've been dying for that. I mean, I love that they did that with David Tennant. They got to show all his companions, Sarah Jean Smith. I mean, it was great. It was fantastic, man. Mm. I was so happy with that. Um, two-parter, the finale. It always will have a soft spot in my heart in David Tennant's time. Um, and now we get Dave Ross in Series 9. Mm, awesome, Can't yeah. freaking wait for that. Yes, I know, possibly, I know. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not been confirmed, I know that. No, no, but no, yeah, no. I see what you mean. Yeah, I, I know they, they sort of said that last year, because of the that trailer, I See Into Your Soul, that, that deep right. people were saying it was Davros, and it was just a dark I mean, I'm, I, I know that Peter Capaldi had requested things and people to mm. face, and two things I heard that he really wanted when he first started was to be in a Dalek episode, which they did into the Dalek, yep. and he wanted to encounter Davros. So he got his wish with that. Uh, I also heard that he wanted to, I think he wanted Sea Devils. I don't know if they're going to well, do that. mainly some of the pertly stuff, like the Axons. And right, the, right. The so I'm really looking forward to Series 9. To, the way I feel, I feel like a kid. I feel that most of my wishes have been granted from what I'm hearing about Series 9, especially the Christmas special, which I've been dying for the Singing Towers. I hope that that's the story. Um, I was hoping, I was thinking about that as well, actually. I was thinking, oh, could they do that um, with River? Yeah. Yeah, now we're hearing a big rumor that besides River returning, they may, I mean, this is a rumor, okay? I, I Don't jump up and down. I'm not reporting this, people, that this is confirmation. It's just a rumor that just like we got to see Peter Capaldi and Data Doctor, we may get to see the 13th Doctor because supposedly rumored is that there will be specials next year and Peter Capaldi regenerates New Year's 
um, uh, of the following. I think it's 2017. I'm not sure uh, what they're going to do, but or it could be 2016 and 2017. I'm not sure, uh, but uh, supposedly River shows the Doctor's future. It's just a rumor, guys. Okay, I haven't. I just heard this today. I, I haven't really uh, looked into it. We're going to talk about it on the River Beans cast. Um, I'm not even sure if the River episode has to do with the Singing Towers, but I'm very excited. Um, what do you think of River? What I think of River? Um, I, I guess this whole news that's been going around is getting mixed reactions. I, I, as, unless they revisit a certain part of her life, um, that, and it, uh, you know, that would be fine. But if it's a continuation, I'm like, sort of leading from the name of the doctor. I don't understand how they do that, but, right. um, I'm sort of, opt I'm, I'm, I remain optimistic of how they're going to play it out. We also have audios with yeah. River coming up. You heard the audios, yes, audios, yes. So, and she could perform again. And supposedly she gets out of the library. And, yeah, and, and you know, body. Yeah, I guess. Sort of like the Nethersphere creating bodies. I mean, that's supposedly what happens. Uh, I always believe that she gets out of the library. I don't think she, I would think she would be bored real fast. And she'd be like, we're going to get it. Because she would see that as another prison. You know? Because um, she's not free to roam and do what she wants to do. Um, okay, so now you're in charge of a new series of Doctor Who, right? Right. Let's just say hypothetically, right? What would you do? Like, in other words, I'm not saying going deep. Who, what villains would you showcase in your series of Doctor Who with Peter Capaldi? Who would you bring in? Who would you redesign? Who would remain the same? What would you do? Right. For, um, I guess if I was to do Taikata Pinnacle I'd have a lot of new, I'd have a couple of new monsters. That would be great. It sort of introduce a new monster. So I really like what they did with Deep Breath of the Half-Faced Man. I thought he was sort of a, a humanly robot -y sort of villain rather than a monster. Because I, some people say that monsters are villains and put them as the same thing. Monsters are sort of really creatures and the villains that can be like, humans that could be you know the fact that we sort of had the mesh of the two um the sort of the robot sort of thing and it worked just worked really well for that i had something like that like a you know antagonizing human lean villain to begin with and then i lead into the new monsters then midway i probably have a cyberman story but a cyberman story maybe not um as i wouldn't have the design that we have now um i maybe go back to Probably even maybe even something like the Earth Shock, the the eighties Cybermen. Okay. Um, that would be uh, quite interesting. Um, or maybe given maybe the eighties Cybermen with a bit of an update. Um, I'd say, or the sixties. I love the sixties stuff. Sixties, uh, eighties with modern stuff. Um, then I do a couple new monsters, and then maybe, hopefully, introduce. Um, this may be conspiracy, this sort of very religious conspiracy, like we would talk about um, possible astronaut, no, possible astronaut, impossible planet. I get confused by the two very easily, just impossible, you know. Right. Um, yeah, some sort of maybe conspiracy sort of there, and he sort of thought, it's all like maybe bad, sort of something really similar to Bad Wolf, but maybe a bit relig more religious, but bigger. Um, something that, you know, affects time and space and stuff. Okay. Um, Capaldi really wanted a Gallifrey, sort of a Cyberman to take control of Gallifrey, which I really liked. Uh, I thought that was actually a very creepy and uh, fantastic idea that they become time lords and they have access to time and space. Um, whether I do that or just bring back something like Sutek or Davros or some Jagaroth. Yeah. Count nice Scarlioni and yeah. Count Scarlioni, yes. That yes. would be. He's yeah, still around. Grab him. Yeah, yeah. Bring the value back, maybe, too. Mm. They mentioned his name. Mm. So, never know, man. All right, dude. Thank you very much for appearing on this episode. No uh, we will be back today with the Real Blue Beans cast 667, the unboxing. More toys to show off, all right? Take care. Bye for now. Bye-bye.